Welcome back to On the Break. John and Andres here with you again. Coming off of a 4-0 victory. Oh, how sweet it was. Even if it is just Sheffield United. It was still fun to watch. It was still, you know, front foot football. FFF. Very exciting to see. Uh, it was fun to see uh, Bale have his hat trick. And now officially have more goal contributions in a third of a season than Eric Lamella has had since 2018. We could talk about that later. Uh, interesting lineup is, uh, the, you know, he, he keeps, Ryan Mason keeps switching it up. Uh, it was great to see Dele back in the fold. I think he got stronger as the game went on. Um, you know, I, I, it was, it was, Lo Celso was, I don't know, he's still, he's still not quite there yet. Um, but it was just really, really great to see the, the angles of play forward. Uh, the, the attacks coming from, from Surge. No, they're coming from Regulon. No, they're coming from, you know, uh, at some points, uh, Hoiberg. You know, you just didn't know who was making darting runs, and Sheffield just looked really, really confused for most of the game. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, 100%. And I think it, like, bears repeating, obviously, you know, at Sheffield United, their right. 20th place, right? Like they've had a really, really disastrous season. Uh, but that aside, I mean, Spurs really did turn up, you know? Uh, and it was interesting to see because in the Jose Mourinho side, I don't think we pressed that much. I don't think we lined up in a 4-2-3-1. Four, uh, four, and Dele doesn't uh, really play in that game. Neither does Gareth Bale, I don't think. Uh, and they, those were the two that I called out. I actually wrote a piece right after the game. I'll, we'll link it down below, but I, those were the two that I called out that really changed the game for Spurs because something that we were talking about offline, John, is that Harry Kane was missing. Why do you think that is? What was going on there? Uh, missing in what sense? I thought he was uh, – well, his shooting boots were missing oh, for oh, sure. Like just, you just know, his like, presence was yeah, – yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, he had a couple of shockers there for sure. I, I, I don't know – I maybe – Maybe just with with, maybe he just doesn't feel the same, you know. Now that the things have have kind of changed, maybe his outlook's different. Maybe his head's in a different place. We don't know what's going to happen this summer. I'm not saying that he's just not with it because he's a professional and he's always 100 mm-hmm. percent into the match. I, you know, I just think it was it's a, it's something new. It's a new system. We've we've just spent the last uh, you know 18 months with him being the centerpiece of our attack, and all of a sudden now we're attacking from all different angles. You know, he's running around trying to pick up the ball to make up his mark, too. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think there was a little bit of that, you know, as well. We still look a little tactically confused. I think everybody had the idea, but it was it was a little bit of chaos personified. It, it was <laughs> beautiful chaos. Uh, and, and I think that kind of worked to our advantage uh, in this match. Better question than Harry Kane, because, you know, Harry Kane's always going to be there. Where the hell is Tangy and Dolly? That's uh, missing, man. Missing and wanted dead or alive, hopefully alive. Because honestly, I'm, I'm not sure how uh, how Tangi and Dumbele can miss two games and just not even make a, a substitute appearance. Harry Winks made a substitute appearance over him, you know? We've seen um, two Harry Winks appearances and zero and Dumbele appearances. I am glad that Mason is playing Gio Lo Celso, uh, but just play Tangi. Literally, just like that's probably the easiest managerial decision you can make as a Spurs manager right now. Um, playing the best players, and very, very clearly, everyone can see it. Tanky is our best midfielder, so just play him. It He's just makes life like, easier for you. You know, this also could be a product of he is the fifth most. He has the fifth most minutes on our on, on the squad this season, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which which may, was a little surprising to me at first. But when you see the names, and it, it does kind of make sense. He has the, so maybe it was just a matter of, you know, uh, some of the people that have been shut out under Mourinho, like like Dele, like Winks, uh, etc. Maybe this is kind of a rotational tactic. Maybe, but also we're playing one game a weekend. You know, yeah. like it's not like our our um, schedules jam packed anymore. Um, you know, these are pretty. And it's against Sheffield United. I mean, all due respect, it's not going to be the most demanding game to play either. Well, maybe maybe I could I could buy that against. Minutes. Perhaps yeah, maybe, right. Maybe but, it's not about rotation, but maybe just getting these players who didn't have minutes. Maybe just getting them a little bit up to speed for the rest of the season. Sure, but then you're 
making sure that the best players are not up to speed for the rest of the season either, right? <laughs> because point, yeah. Yeah. because Ndombele just misses out, right? And now, is he going to be rusty uh, for the rest of the season? Um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. So I think it was it, Dustin. I, I, what's up? I was going to say, I think, I think it was like Dustin Menmo who wrote uh, something about how uh, he, he thinks Ryan will have an academy approach. And mm-hmm. I, you mentioned it also last week, saying that, you know, when you were talking about the cup final and everything, about how Winks may have been, the, for Ryan anyway, a, a better choice because he may have some kind of, you know, connection and, with the, and know the, 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 uh, how, how momentous the moment was. Um, but so maybe there's a little bit of that too. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't think anybody really knows the, the firm answer. I, I saw... There, there was a bunch of uh, conspiracy theorists uh, on social media surprising, you know, basically saying, you know, all is well. It's fine. I, I think even Alistair Gold said there's there's no problem. He's he, he's looking at it. Tangy is looking at it as a challenge to get to uh, to that next level to prove to who's ever coming next. But you have to imagine that whoever the next manager is and we'll get into that. Uh, that's the sorting out this midfield is going to be priority one. Yeah, well, sorting out the midfield and sorting out the defensive back line, even though the defense, although they had nothing to do essentially against Sheffield United, right. I thought played pretty well. Uh, something that I did also want to call out is just how pressing we were. You know, it really, you, you use the words uh, magical chaos or beautiful chaos. Those I think those are words. Chaos. Those are words from Pochettino, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and this match reminded me of Pochettino Spurs. It Good. was very much like FFF. Very much, you know, pressing and trying to squeeze the opposition on their own side of the pitch. And honestly, I thought Dele, even though he looked really rusty on the ball and mm. misplaced a couple of passes in the beginning, he ended the match with, I think, the second most amount of tackles for Spurs. He was very good defensively. Very, very good. Uh, and he also was very good at um, relieving pressure from Tottenham's defense uh, by getting fouled a lot he got he got a lot of kicks at his ankles yeah it was good um, to see the nutmegs come in again yeah and then the nutmegs came in too so it was it was great to see just like a prime ballet song with some great finishes a pressing system wing backs bombing up and down the pitch on both flanks that was a pochettino game if i've ever seen one so more of that with tengi and the belly in the mix i would say that was a tottenham game of what we've been used to, you know, and that's, mm-hmm. that's the, that's the style of football that, we, you know, we've, we've come to know and appreciate until, you know, and the fear of Mourinho came, came true, whether, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the, the best, the best example of it is the pressing. Look at the press under Mourinho versus look at the press of what we had, um, what we had uh, on Sunday, completely different presses. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. The line was way more forward. We had all three of our uh, attackers, both Son, Kane, and and Bale, surprisingly. And GLC would get into the mix, too. Really putting pressure on Basham uh, on mm-hmm. the rest of their line uh, to, to make an error. And you saw how many poor passes came out of the that went right to uh, Hoiberg, went right to Dele, mm-hmm. went right to GLC. I'm surprised we honestly didn't have, like, six goals. Just because the mount, especially in that first half, it was, uh, it, yeah. it, it was nutty. So, um yeah, they, they, they looked like uh, they looked like a team well beaten. Let's let's look at a little bit uh, forward here now. Uh, as of recording this, West Ham has just beaten Burnley two to one, um, and I'll get back to them in a second. But looking at a top four, to have a, a basically a realistic view. Now it is it is entirely possible that we can still make top four. Now I don't know if a lot of fans are ready to put stock in that because they don't want to be hurt again. They're not ready. <laughs> Uh, uh, to, yeah. to, to feel that burn. Understandably so. Understandably so, especially coming after a, a cup final. But if you look at Chelsea's schedule going uh, over the next few games, you have uh, Man City, Arsenal, and, and Leicester. Um, uh, and, of course, uh, for, for um, Leicester, they have Man United and, and Chelsea. Um, and for us, we have Leeds, Wolves, and Aston Villa. Um, and ending with Leicester. I mean, there, there's there's entirely mm-hmm. a possible and plausible situation where our season comes down to our final match against mm-hmm. Leicester. On top of that, of these teams, though, West Ham has by far the easiest schedule coming up. Um, and, uh, you know, they 
they could very much likely take, especially the way they play today was impressive. They could run the board too uh, and, mm-hmm. and make top four. So it's it's going to be tight, but it's it's entirely possible we do it. Top four is a definite possibility. I don't see Chelsea dropping the points. I really don't. And something that is worth mentioning also is that Chelsea, Manchester City also have um, European uh, competition as well, right? So they might be a little bit distracted. They might get tired. Who knows what happens to injury? All of that good stuff, right? Yeah. But Chelsea have looked very, very good. And I don't think that they're going to drop the points. Even against City Less- and Arsenal? I could see Arsenal spoiling it for Chelsea a little bit. I can't see. I cannot see uh, Chelsea losing to Arsenal right now. Arsenal look all sorts out of whack, whereas Chelsea look very, very strong um, against Manchester City. Of course, anything can happen, but I do think that a, a tie. I'm leaning towards a tie, but a, a City can absolutely win it. Um, I think at the end of the day, Europa League is probably where we deserve to be. Honestly, John. Yeah. Um, Champions League. Probably the truth. I think I'm, I'm, I'm the type of fan that is doesn't want to get his hopes up because we all know what, what happened against Newcastle. I feel like we talk about this uh, relatively often on, on this YouTube channel where we need one point to you know finish above Arsenal and then we get we lose 5-1 yeah. right against a 10-man Newcastle. So anything can happen in this crazy sport. I don't want to get my hopes up. I do think that we can finish the – uh, season on a great note if out of the next four games we get nine points that would be incredible i would be very very happy with that of yeah. course anything more than that uh would be amazing and i do think that 12 points would be necessary we would have yeah, to win now have to, win for to have any chance of, of making up the top four yep you're not wrong we would have to win out and even then it's uh it would be difficult i think you're yeah. right i think that's where we deserve to be Europa League. I don't, I don't know. I, I especially. I'm not sure what kind of transfer window we're going to have either. What what kind of funds are going to be available? I don't so, even know who we're going to have as a manager. Right. Yeah. So I mean, maybe it's just not the time for us. But what we do know is that that was a hell of a showing, and I want to see three more matches just like it leading up to Leicester. Um, thank you, Andres. Thank you, everybody. Let us know what you thought about the matches. Good to see some FFF again. Let us know how you. Thanks, feel. John. All right, everybody. Take care. Thank you. We'll see you next time on the break.